talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We don't talk about Bruno. Actually, we are going to talk about Bruno. Assalamualaikum everyone and welcome to another episode of TSF Reviews and today we're going to be taking on the family Madrigal the specifically the Encanto review and um, there's a lot to say about Encanto just not as much to say about Bruno uh, but we'll get to that <laughs> Encanto is a nice latest installation of the Disney animated uh, franchise and it is I have to say a welcomed one. It's one that is making waves. And I don't think I've seen a movie make waves this big since Moana. Uh, everybody's talking about it. The entire fandom is crazy. And I figured that the time to re- uh, put this review up because of delays would would be the confirmed birthday of Mirabel, which is today at the day this review goes up. So talking about the movie, the movie centers around this family called the Madrigals who have been given this gift. It comes from Alma, who is the grandmother, and basically she passed it on. The gift was passed on to her through ways unknown. And from there it went on to her children, and then from her children to their children. <clears throat> uh, which is a great concept. Everybody's uh, gifts uh, are unique to them and uh, it's all just fascinating the entire story is that uh, one of the main characters Maribel did not get a gift and uh, everybody's worried that it's because that the magic that gave him the gift is slowly dying and then they have to figure out how to fix it and how to save it um that's essentially the plot the entire movie is based on the structure that uh the madrigals are all strained as a family and that they have to kind of uh, maribel has to kind of figure out why <clears throat> the plot is amazing like you can't even really it's hard to tell that so much time is passed when you're watching this movie um you watch this movie and the time just goes by this transition to the entire movie is smooth the characters are all well written well developed it's an astounding you know, change of pace from other stuff. Every character has their own issues. Every character has their own proper personality that you can see come through on screen. Even characters like Peppa, who doesn't spend a lot of time on screen, is shown to be this personality, this bubbly personality who's always worried and stressed but has to keep her calm because of the family. We see characters like Louisa, who's always... who's Super strength has like the ability to crush mountains if she wants to, but she's always she's carrying this pressure and burden. It's like every character pops nicely. Well, every character except, in my opinion, Isabella. But we will get to that when we get to that. This story is incredibly well written, and it the best part of it that I have to say is that it doesn't leave anything. Well, it leaves a lot of stuff open in it, to be fair, being very honest. But the point is, it's all contained within the movie. It's not like, a, oh, here's an explanation for this. No, it's magic. This is the thing. It's magic, accept that and move on. And that's what I love about this movie. It's like, okay, this is magic. I don't care about that. I want to know about the people. I don't care about this magic and where it came from. I want to know about who these people are and what's going on with them. <clears throat> From beginning to end, the characters develop nicely. Online, even like the fan base, which is pretty huge for this movie, debates about who the true villain is. The intergenerated, the intergenerational trauma that all the characters are facing. Is it the grandmother? Is it some external force? Just to clarify, in my opinion, it is the grandmother, and there are lots of reasons to kind of explain why it's the grandmother. 
all the stuff that happens in the movie but like that's completely separate altogether i loved the characters i love the movie but the thing that i want to talk about the most is the soundtrack of this movie the soundtrack is just gorgeous i still find myself humming the song from the intro all day in the house i find myself singing surface pressure i find myself singing all of these songs randomly all throughout the house over the last month the soundtrack is just phenomenal there everything about this soundtrack is fantastic the writer Lin Manuel Miranda of all the songs, I applaud you. I loved Ham- uh, Hamilton. I loved the songs in Moana. I loved this. And anything that you do, any work that you do when it comes to music is always fascinating. Right? Uh, you have to truly watch the movie to appreciate it. And I think that that says a lot about how good this movie is. Um, like apart from the fact that a couple of things uh, are left up in the air, like the magic and where it came from, um, the movie still does a good job of kind of keeping it away from everybody's mind, right? So there's so much going on in every second of the movie. And it's all well written. The characters, I mean, I get this. This movie overall is just so great that it's hard to say anything bad about it. Um, But I'm going to try to say something bad about it. I think Isabella is the worst character in this entire movie. And I think her song does not justify her character. Right. And that's my opinion. Right. But Isabella, people say, say stuff about like Encanto about how Isabella is supposed to be this princess character that everybody's supposed to just love and Luisa is supposed to be just this character that uh, you know it's, it's a good character but like people aren't gonna love as much as Isabella because Isabella is like the princess stereotype and people like have posted online about how is Luisa, uh, Luisa's toys have sold more than Isabella's because Luisa is like this more relatable character and although I do agree that she is a more relatable character, I don't think that's why Isabella Toys didn't sell as well. I think, and rightfully so, is because Isabella is just a bad character overall. Right? The entire movie she's been a jerk to everybody. And just because she has one song at the end where she claims, oh, I have problems, all of a sudden we're supposed to like her. And I mean, some people do, I don't. I think that that song does not change the personality that come that came all the way through, right? As you could have at least shown her, you know, being apprehensive towards the stereotype, this bubble that she's put in, but she's never been apprehensive to it. She's always been accepting of it and acting as if that this is true. Even in the song, we don't talk about Bruno. They specifically tell her that her life is going to be perfect. And she never says, but I don't want it that way. She... Although technically that's something else to discuss altogether. And I'll get into that. But here she's always, she claims to have always been told that she's perfect. And all of a sudden she acknowledges it. Yes, yes, I'm perfect. I'm doing everything. She acts it. She gracefully coming down the stairs and everything. And she still at the end is like, oh no, I'm only doing this for the family. But no, you're not. You're doing this for yourself. You're just using the family as a scapegoat to justify your actions. And that's just bad, bad thing to do as a character. Right? I don't appreciate it. Whatever the case. Um, people like Isabella, that's fine. I personally don't like Isabella. I think that Louisa is a better character because Louisa is written better and is shown off in much better way than Isabella ever was. Bruno is probably one of my favorite characters as well. Right? Bruno is just an, a hilarious character uh, throughout the entire movie. His visions are always great. I, I think he gets a bad rap from Alma because just because he's, his visions are always bad. But no, his visions aren't always bad. Every vision he, ha- he has ever had has been preventable, right? Even from Lady Deadfish, which is her translated name, if I remember correctly, her fish died because Bruno predicted her fish would die. Right now, Bruno can't predict why, but because there was no 
uh, plant life in the bowl and the fish died. And the guy would grow a gut. Oh, yeah, if he kept up his eating habits, of course he's going to grow a gut. And I have a gut. I, I mean, I don't eat healthy. I can grow gut. And all of these things are avoidable. Bruno even says in the movie that every single vision he has can go either way. Like it's always left or right. And everybody just seems to see the bad side of it. And he even says that, okay. Every, I knew how everybody was going to react, so I just destroyed the vision and walked away. And that kind of thinking is something that's just brilliant in this movie. Like, understanding where he stands and taking action on it, right? There's always some confusion about the ages in this movie. Because I, up until like two days ago, I didn't know that you had to be five years old to get your gift in the movie. And I always thought that, you know, Mirabelle was like 20 and Antonio was around 10. No, Antonio is five, Mirabel is 15, right? 16 by this point, but like if we come today as her birthday, but uh, it just adds to like the whole family drama that goes on, right? Uh, that means Antonio was born after she didn't get her gift and it could lead to a lot of questions. Like, did Alma make Papa have another kid? But I think that this is just an overall uh, great movie personally i would like to have seen a little bit more from characters like julieta and augustine well, augustine did a pretty great job in the movie i'd love to have seen more of julieta and uh that's pretty much it what i would love to see though if i'm being very honest is an encanto tv series i think we've, we've, we've discussed it like out off screen a lot that an encanto tv series with like hijinks of the day kind of storyline would be just amazing and would be great i'd love to see it I'd love to see more of these characters. The Doctor Who reference of the room being bigger on the inside, we only got to see three rooms in the entire movie. And one only is slight view. We got to see Isabella's room and we got to see Antonio's room properly. We never got to see anybody else's room and we saw a glimpse of Alma's room when she's walking out in one scene. And I'd love to see more. I'd love to see more about Casita. Casita is also, by the way, is easily my favorite character in the entire movie. If I had to rank, it's above Bruno, above Luisa, above Maribel. Like the Casita is just the best. And I could sit here all day discussing whether or not I think Maribel has a gift, uh, what my theories are about the movie. And I feel like that's a separate video altogether. But personally, I feel like this movie was just a home run. Uh, Writing-wise, animation-wise, um, there's one scene particularly where Maribel is just like coming out of Bruno's room and there's sand all over her face. Now that looks so, I mean, I don't know, but that particular scene just tells me like how great this animation is because of how realistic that scene looks in the sense that the individual grains of sand are visible and I just, I just loved it a lot. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about this movie. The writing is fantastic. The songs are just Earworm material, amazing. I listen to it in the car every time I go out. And with that said, I think I'll go on to the score. Uh, the score being, for me, an 8.5 out of 10. And with that said, uh, thank you all for watching. And I'll love to catch you all next time.